welcome to our reminiscence session. Um, for those of you who've seen some of our other films, welcome back. We're doing another one. And for those who haven't, my name is Alex and I come from East Riding Library Service. Because we can't come into homes at the moment and actually do a, like a reminiscence session face to face, we're bringing them to you on film instead. So what we've been doing in the last few films is we've been visiting rooms around the house and that's what we're going to do again today. We're going to visit another room. So we're hoping that um, some of the things that we've got to show you will jog some memories. Going through the film, we will put pauses in so that you've got a chance to discuss your memories with the people that you're sitting with. OK, so first object. OK, so we've got a screw top. There we go. So, which room do you think we may be visiting today? What room would you have used this in? Yep, I'm sure you've got it. Today, we're going to talk about the bedroom. So, what do you remember about, to start with, your childhood bedroom? Um, did you have to share it with lots of brothers and sisters? And if so, did you all share a, a big double bed or did you have the luxury of having a bed to yourself? Um, <clears throat> I've got um, a piece from a book um, and it's actually a lady who was brought up in Wilberforce, which some of you might know, it's near York and it's called Early 20th Century, when I was young. Now, this lady was actually born in 1906, so maybe a little bit before some of you, but probably quite similar. Now she obviously lived in a big house because they had five bedrooms. Her parents had the biggest one and she shared a room with her two younger sisters. She had the single bed and her sisters shared the double bed. Her two elder sisters shared another bedroom and they must have been quite posh because they had two living maids and they had a room. And they also had a spare room for when somebody was poorly. So that's it. They had a dedicated room for when you were sick. <clears throat> I bet not many people had that. So they obviously were quite wealthy. So what do you remember about your bedroom growing up? Um, was it always quite cramped? Was there a lot of you? Was it warm or was it cold? Was it one of those bedrooms that when you get up in the morning there was ice on the windows? So, if you want to just have a think about your bedroom as a child, as I say, whether you had to share it, how many of you there was, how you actually managed to sleep, if there was a lot of you, did you top and tail? Do you remember getting kicked in the head by your brothers and sisters? So, have a think about that and we'll just have a little pause so you can have a chat. Okay, now you've had a good chat about those beds and how you had to share them or not. Um, now we'll have a little think about the, the bed itself and we'll start off with the bedding. Now, what type of bedding did you have? I'm assuming it was probably sheets and blankets. Um, were those blankets like those itchy, scratchy blankets that you, that you used to get? I know my grandma used to have those and you used to have to be really careful that you got them covered with the sheet because otherwise they were really itchy and scratchy on your neck. And those, those sheets that were um, that were probably white because then they could be boil washed and that feeling of getting into bed when they were freshly washed sheets. Do you remember that? Did they have a particular smell? They'd been dried outside or if they'd been dried by the fire, did they smell slightly smoky? And obviously moving on, possibly to once you got married, they maybe went from um, sheets and blankets to a duvet or an eider down with a nice or nice posh bed spread over the top um, so yeah our 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 bedding has sort of um evolved over time uh, now your pillows were they feather do you remember having feather pillows um where the the stalks of the feathers prick you because they poke through the pillow um, and did you have to share pillows? Did you even have a pillow or did you have to roll up some clothing or something and use that as a pillow? 
And what do you remember about sleeping in those beds? Um, what was your actual bed like? Did you have a comfy mattress or was it really lumpy? Did you have a, a bed frame or was it just a mattress on the floor? Okay, and again, was it a single bed or was it a double bed? Now, some mattresses, they used to be stuffed with straw. And then as we got on, obviously mattresses got springs in them. So what's your memory about the, the mattress that was on your bed? Now, we said earlier about bedrooms and you were very lucky if you had a fireplace in there. But if not, they could get very cold. You got ice on the inside of the windows. So that object that we looked at earlier, our bed warmer, you would fill it full of hot water and pop it in your bed. Now, did you have something like this? And if you did, did you always have a fight with your brothers and sisters to see who could put their foot or their feet on the, on the hot water bottle? The other thing before these, was one of these the bed warmer yes yeah, so if I'm I'm led to believe you would have put hot coals or something in there and then it would have been shoved in between the sheets on your bed and it would have been left there until you went to bed and then it would be taken out and hopefully you would have a nice warm spot in your bed do you remember anything like that did you have the luxury of having any war any warmth put into your bed did you just heat up a brick and put that in that would have worked as well now the other essential that probably most bedrooms had and i'm sure you know what this is yes the glorious chamber pot or the gazunda whatever you care to call it because this was probably a better option than tripping down the yard to the toilet. But I'm sure you all have memories of using the chamber pot. Okay, and the other thing, now you don't have to tell us all your secrets, but what did you sleep in? Did you wear pyjamas? Did you wear a nighty? If it was a cold bedroom, you probably put layers on to go to bed. Um, and the other thing, how was that? How was that room lit? Do you remember? Did you have oil lamps, candles? Did you have electric lights? Was there a? If there was lots of you in the room, was there always an argument over when the lights were going to go out? Okay, so if you want to have a think about the bed and the bedding and your memories of that, we'll have a little pause. Okay, now we're going to have a little chat about the other furniture that might have been in your bedroom. Um, so things like, where did you keep your clothes? Chances are you had a wardrobe um, and maybe a chest of drawers. Ladies, you might have had a dressing table and um, you may have had a bookshelf. Now, <clears throat> probably um, as, you, as you got a bit older and maybe got married, you might have had a bedroom set where all that matched. I know my mum and dad did. They had a, a big wardrobe, they had um, a dressing table and a chest of drawers and they all matched. They were all in the same wood and they bought it as a bedroom set. Um, I think they possibly even had a headboard with sideboards as well that matched. So it all came together as a set. Um, <clears throat> so what do you remember um, about where you kept your clothes? And did you have a blanket box at the end of the bed? I know a lot of people did. Um, <clears throat> So if you have a think about that. Now, we mentioned um, a dressing table. What sort of things would there have been on that dressing table? Now, I think one of the things that was on there would probably have been a jewellery box. Now, I brought my jewellery box in, which was actually handed down to me 
um, <clears throat> from my grandma and I believe it goes back further in the family as well. I'm not quite sure how far but I will just grab it and show you it. So this is my big wooden jewellery box. So when we open the lid, it has all my rubbish inside, but it also has some what we think are probably perfume bottles, but we're not quite sure. And it has um, some material in the top to hang your brooches and such like on. I have to have the lid up because the front also drops down, that's a bit of a squeak, and then it also has two drawers that open up. There we go. So, do you remember um, having anything like this that was maybe handed down to you, or do you remember your mum having a jewellery box that was possibly handed down to you? Was that something as a child that you were allowed to play with? Were you allowed to go through mum's jewellery box and try on the jewellery and things like that? I remember doing that with my other grandma's jewellery box. I remember trying on her jewellery and things. Okay. Um, the other thing that may have been on your dressing table was a dressing table set. So a brush and a comb and maybe a handheld mirror. And quite often they all matched as well. So... Ladies, if you remember anything like that, um, you can have a chat about that in a moment. Um, the other thing that you might have had in your bedroom, maybe if you were, when you were younger, a bookshelf. So now we've got um, a couple of, couple of books here. We've got the Champion, Annual for Boys, published in 1948, that one. So all sorts of pictures and things people playing football and we've also got the storybook of the cowboy so did you have a bookshelf in your bedroom it's something that's quite common now uh, most children have a bookshelf in their bedroom but was that something that you had when you were growing up or as you've as you've got older is it something that you've got now now some of you Probably from when you were married, may remember this wondrous invention. The tea's made! How could you not want to wake up on a morning to a freshly brewed cup of tea? And look, it has your little alarm clock on the front as well. So you can tell the time. There we go, and it boiled up your water and then brewed up your tea. So you had your, your separate little mug somewhere. So does anyone remember having the teas made? Okay, I think they might have done one a bit later. They might have done one for coffee as well. So have a think about that as to whether you remember. And just something else that you might have had uh, when you were younger and you started work, how did you know what time to get up? Did you have an alarm clock? Can you still remember what sound that alarm clock made? Was it just a bell or was it some other type of sound? And just lastly, thinking about the furniture and, and the bedroom as a room, what did you have on the floor of your bedroom? Was it sort of a lino or um, just floorboards? So that would be a bit cold or did you have carpet or maybe rugs? So if you want to just have a think about that. So we've discussed the furniture and dressing tables, things that might have been on dressing tables. You've got your chest of drawers, gentlemen, if there's particular things that you maybe kept on the top of, chest, of the chest of drawers, maybe that was your space. You want to have a think about that and then the flooring our wondrous jewelry box and teas made so if you want to have a think about all of that and have a little chat we'll be back with you shortly okay welcome back so um, we're now going to talk about grooming personal grooming and um, 
all that getting ready that you may have done in your bedroom before those nights out or before those going on those dates. So we'll start with the ladies and um, we'll start first of all with our crowning glories, our hair. Okay, so chances are you were like me and if you had curly hair, what you really wanted was straight hair and those who had straight hair really wanted curly hair. So for people like me, now we, we saw this in the um, in the kitchen to get those lovely straight hair a good old flat iron and I know people did this so ironing your hair heating it up and ironing your hair probably with um, a damp towel or some brown paper or something over the top to stop it getting scorched but yes so for those curly haired ladies like me who wanted straight hair a lovely iron now, for those ladies with the lovely straight hair that actually wanted curls, um, you may have had these in your house, but they may have been before your time, so you may not have actually used them. But we believe that these were used as curling tongs. So you would grip them onto your hair and then whoop, curl them up and hold them. But I should have said you would have probably heated them in the fire to start with. So, I don't quite know what state your hair may have ended up in, but there's those, and then there's these as well, which don't fit one inside the other, but we think they're probably used for curling as well. You may be able to tell us. So, if you have any ideas, feel free to let us know. I'll give you the details at the end where you can let us know. So, there's those. Now we have this, which is definitely our mystery object for today. We're not even sure whether it is a hair implement, but if you can give us any idea, it's been repaired or handmade. We're not quite sure, but was it used for your hair? Was it to create waves in your hair? Not quite sure, but if you know, we'll give you the details at the end to let us know what that is. Obviously going on, whoops throwing things on the floor you've got your curl clips that you would have probably finger put the finger curl in and then put the clip in okay and then do you remember putting your rollers in okay putting those rollers in and maybe covering them with a headscarf okay that was actually rollers are something that came back a few years ago and there was a whole craze of people going out in their rollers. Now I'm sure that in your day that is something that would not have been done. Um, <clears throat> but there we go. So yes, so you have your rollers. So going on from there, um, on to makeup. So do you remember what makeup products you used? Now, we have a few of the sort of commercially made ones. I'll tell you what I didn't mention. How to keep our hair all nice and in place once we've spent all that time on it. Of course, the lacquer or the hairspray. Now, these are adverts for Elnet, which is still around. So, do you remember using lots of lacquer on your hair do you remember did it have a particular smell and did it make your hair feel a particular way you just have a have a think about that and try and remember but now back to makeup so we were we were having a look and we found max factor again something that's still around and there uh, Pancake, which was that one, it came in the flat packaging, little tub. And then going on to the pan stick, which again is still around, is the pan stick. Okay, so do you remember using any of those? <clears throat> now for those of you who were maybe 
teenagers in the war or just after the war um i found out somewhere that you possibly used burnt cork for mascara and cochineal or beetroot juice to give you those lovely red ruby lips bicarbonate of soda as deodorant um obviously the famous gravy browning to use as your leg tint since when stockings weren't available and soot mixed with petroleum jelly for your eyeshadows so if you can think of anything else um, that you maybe used or if you can think of any other um, brands of makeup that you used or particular was there something that you used for eyeliner or anything like that you will give you a time to have a chat in a few minutes now we always have to smell nice didn't we ladies so the lovely perfume now we've got a few here again that are still around we've got the chanel number no. five which still comes in a very similar bottle and we've also got a christian dior one down here and another one evening in paris now did you have a particular perfume do you still have a particular perfume that you use um, and can you still remember that smell okay So ladies, that's all your grooming products. So if you want to have a quick chat amongst yourselves, um, gents, if there's anything that you remember your mum doing or your wives doing, um, then if you, feel free to have a chat about that now. And we'll just have a little pause to give you a few minutes. Okay, gents, we're on to you now. It's your turn now. So gents, thinking about hairstyles. And did you ever have a quiff? Or were you a teddy boy? And do you remember having to spend hours getting that hair looking just right? Something which you may have used and which the ladies probably also used as well. And I forgot to mention the hair dryer. Now, I don't know what year this one would have been. It's a HMV one. So not quite sure. There's, there's no number on it, but um, it's got a hot setting and a cold setting. So, do any of you remember having a hairdryer like that or something similar? I remember my mum's hairdryer was a box and it had a long pipe, a bit like an elephant's trunk. <coughs> so, do you remember, gents, spending hours in front of the mirror trying to get that hair looking just right? Do you remember using particular products to get that hair to stay just how you wanted it. You might have used hairspray, but maybe not. You probably stuck with the Brill Cream. So there we go, there's an advert. Do you remember? Do you remember that advert for Brill Cream? Or we've got some more. Men of action needed Brill Cream. So there you go. Do any of those hairstyles look familiar? Anybody have a hairstyle like that? Okay. And gents, who cut your hair? Now, ladies, you probably went to the hairdresser, although someone at home might have cut it for you. When I was younger, my grandma cut my hair. Um, but gents, what did you do? We've got some, some clippers here. They've also been described as beard trimmers, I'm not quite sure, but they would have probably been used to um, clip the hair up the back. Okay, so does that look familiar? Did you have any of those? Okay, so also now, gents, moving on to shaving. Did any of you have a wet shave with that cutthroat razor? Did your dad teach you how to, use, how to do that? Or did you ever go somewhere? Did you go to Barbers to have a shave? Do you remember the first time you had a shave? And how old were you? Now here we've got a, a posh looking electric razor. I'll open my posh box, look. 
It's a Remington, which again are still doing the rounds. Not sure what year this would be. But it's a, it's a plug-in razor look. Oh, you plugged it into your light socket look. Or you could, or you could plug it into your two pin shaver point. So do you remember having your first electric razor? Okay. And obviously, after you've had your shave, you've got to put your aftershave on. Was there a particular one you used? Some that, again, are still doing the rounds. There we go. We've got Old Spice. Tagline is, a man wants a man's gift. Old Spice. Or Brut, or Brute, however you pronounced it. Again, do you remember those adverts? And then going on to men's cologne, we've got Aramis. And just something we put in for a bit of fun, a soap on a rope. Do any of you remember soap on a rope? That's something you don't tend to get anymore. It was of a particular era was soap on a rope. So gents, now that we've had you covered, so uh, if you will have a little pause and if you want to have a little chat about men's grooming and what you remember, okay? So obviously the last part, we've done all that grooming. So obviously, um, he's just getting ready, getting dressed to go out now. So you would hit those wardrobes. Um, can you think, was there a particular outfit? Did you have a particular, was there something in particular that you would wear to go out, maybe on a Saturday night or to go out in dancing? Gents, was there a particular style of suit or um, a waistcoat and a tie? What, what sort of things would you have worn? And if you had lots of brothers and sisters of a similar age, um, ladies, was there a battle for the mirror? Um, a battle for the bathroom, if you had moved on to the time when you got ready in the bathroom. Um, so yeah, if you want to have a think about that, there's a, a few things that um, you might have used before you went out. The clothes brush, get rid of all those hairs and those stray bits and pieces so you were looking your best when you went out. We've got our shoe stretcher. Ladies and gents, but ladies for those heels, the, the fronts were a little bit tight. You get the old shoe stretcher in just to make them a bit wider. And every home I think had a shoe horn to help you get your shoes on. Ladies, there was a time where we didn't go out without our pair of gloves and the implement our glove stretcher for those when those when those gloves were a little bit tight pop it in down one of the fingers and open it up and it stretches out the leather okay and yes to finish off finish off the outfit you would hit that jewellery box that we looked at earlier so you might put on your pearls or your brooch or you maybe had a locket of some description that one's a nice one that's actually got um, some hair in it as that one oh, there's another, another little little brooch there so that's about us done for today for this film on the bedroom so i'm sure there's lots of things that we've covered today that have triggered memories for you uh, we are going to cover fashion in a later film and something we couldn't end talking about the bedroom without mentioning our childhood toys now as a child, this is, this is who kept me company going off to sleep. This is Potbelly Bear because he's got a big tummy. That was, that was 
the type of bear he was described as with my pot belly bear so i'll say bye for now and pot belly bear will say bye for now and we'll see you soon should you want to leave any comments you can find us on facebook under east riding libraries museums and archives and we would welcome any feedback or any comments you've got to make about the films that we're making so we'll see you soon so bye from me and bye from bear